Let's see if that worked. All right, we're back on. Let's see if that worked. Yeah, I don't know what the hell just happened, but my computer started just flickering on and off like madness. App started closing on me. Got the stream back up and running, but it, uh... Clearly wasn't working, but we're back now. Mic's working, audio's working. Yeah, I think the PC is tired of this. Fat boy. Sorry about that, guys. Back back to business here. What was I doing? Okay, I just Z remesh this. Ah, and I. Ah, and Z remeshing this was uh, like too much resolution on the Z remesh.
slight bend in the knee, but not too much. Just helps with the rigging when it's there. His eyes and his details aren't symmetrical, but I think I thought his chest was. It's not. Body a little bit, sock it in. Insertion points for bicep.
machine is being so weird right now. Being hacked. Uh, yeah, Blanche, you're not the first person to mention that. I think someone mentioned it last week. I went and looked him up. He doesn't have the, uh, you know, mustache and the beard look that this guy quite has, but. Definitely has that old tough guy feel.
Check, make sure I'm staying kind of tight to the original proportions. Looks like I am. I just want to double check that.
up, Maya, for fun. How are you?
Yeah, Gary, I think uh, when I when I crashed my computer, <laughs> kind of quieted things down a little bit. I had to restart the whole stream. I think I might have lost some people.
still a little bit to do anatomy wise of course um, gonna have to jump up to a higher subdivision level start polishing out these forms a little bit more but overall this is pretty close to what I was envisioning for um, you know, the size and relative shape he's like clearly a little bit stunted but still pretty thick like I wanted to kind of get that sort of old man built out of bricks but still kind of loose skin I think I'm pretty much getting it um, his head does seem feel his head does feel a little big right now could be the helmet though let me turn on that measurement again just to see so he's right at six and a quarter it's pretty small um, Uh, there is no concept for this, uh, Lee Peringa. It's just, uh, I'm just trying to build up a dude here. Let's go to the center. Yeah, no concept for this one. I got an idea in my head what I want to do in terms of just old old guy, old ex-athlete, leather head, you know, like tough guy from the 60s who's definitely older, but still tough guy. Just that little addition of uh, a little bit of length there helped a lot. Uh, you know, Make it a little bit closer to seven heads. feel a little long.
back. Hold alt, nice hard edge, put it back. Just want to make sure real quick that, okay, yeah, so if he tucks his arms down, um, it's about halfway down the thigh, that's correct. And his, the gap in his elbow is like right where the navel is. It's also correct, so these proportions are, are pretty pretty in line. Um, anything, I think I probably need to move all this out though. I wanted to kind of have the pecs sort of sagging. Um, you know, they're there, but they're a little run down. Um, three, six and three fourths head close to a real human. Well, um, you know, I, I talked about this a little bit in the beginning. Um, heroic proportion humans are normal is about seven and a half heads. But this guy's kind of older and kind of hunched over, so I wanted to sort of take him down closer to seven. Um, six and a half was a little bit too ridiculous. Um, even even children are seven heads, infants are four. Um, you know, if you want to get real stylized with it, it could be like f you know four to six heads and get like really 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 cartoony with it. Um, most heroic proportions you see like eight to nine heads and like you know, comics and exaggerated, you know, video games, things like that. Um, but, you know, with this old guy here, I wanted to kind of see how short I can make him, have him kind of have a big head, but it was a little, it felt a little too small. Now he kind of feels like sort of, that sort of like tree trunk old guy that, that I was kind of going for. So that's good. Yeah, it's actually not a PDF. Um, I just collect this just over time. I just have like, I have a OneNote folder. I think OneNote's actually free now. And I just like, this is just like reference for male anatomy, you know, any kind of like breakdown that I have, just arms, where it's just like any kind of meaningful arm anatomy. I started building this up years ago and now it's just like become such a, like, you know, anytime I like want to check something, like this is a more stylized looking arm. Like I love the way this arm looks. Um, you know, it's just uh, really helpful to sort of have a bunch of different approaches to things. Um, you know, same for women. You know, I mean, I have a lot of just uh, proportion stuff on there. But then it goes down to construction and just things I've found on the internet or you know, arm construction is really a big one because of how everything interlocks and what the bones do when you're pronated versus supinated and 
all these things that like you know I should practice every day I wish I had the time to practice every day I don't um, I'd love to be just an anatomy wizard but it's just such a complex mechanism that I just don't have the time to do it and stay keep those tools you know polished but yeah I highly recommend that I mean if you don't have one note which is um, you know fine it's it's I think it's free now but it's not um, you know, use any any number of ways you can keep collages of that kind of stuff and you know you can always use Pinterest as well like I installed the Pinterest button on my web browser and I'm not really big for plugins I don't really like doing adding plugins to things um, but the Pinterest one turns out to be has turned out to be pretty invaluable for me like it's uh, it's like anytime I see a meaningful reference of something I just throw a quick pin drop it on a, a board or if the board doesn't exist yet I'll create one throw it on a board, meaningful board that I can like you know, like, oh well you know what if I need to do you know a certain kind of cloth or a certain kind of mechanic or a certain kind of anatomy I've got a Pinterest board with that info stored on it or at least some revisions on the theme or things like that so pretty helpful tool for just like getting something in front of your face to help you get inspired or just get reference Time to subdivide and get moving on the uh, higher subdivision levels. I think that base mesh is just about blocked out where I want it to be.
searching for a distant star. Don't stop now. Isn't it strange that I was safe from home? So did I go in days of the second bomb? If you're gonna break your shades, you have to let me know. Turn this shit around, just like a top of yours. Cause all you need to do. I always kind of overdo it with that, <laughs> that curve in the foot. Like it's there, but I always make it way too pronounced. I guess catch myself doing that. That already looks a lot better just by cleaning that up a little bit. This is a pretty decent start. I mean, all the main landmarks are in place. I can now get in here and really start <clears throat> beefing them up. Clay build up brush. This is um, this is one of the Z brushes, default brushes. I love it for um, flesh and building up. It's like got the rounded alpha. It's a rounded alpha clay brush. Um, really helpful for just like has a nice little texture to it for popping out, you know, muscle forms. Grabs those convex forms really well. Got more work to do on the hands actually. I did not get too far into the hand sculpt here. Still kind of you can still kind of see the Z sphere shape in it. <coughs> Put some knuckles on this. on this 
really quickly, but he definitely exaggerated his hands like that was on purpose, but I think I'm gonna have trouble. just a way for me to remind myself that's the like axis on which to stay straight, you know? Like that's where it's gonna be bending. That's how it's gonna fold in. It's gonna just kinda your finger your thumb kinda just goes towards your pinky little pad right there. more like a hand, eh? What's the theme for this model? Oh, it's just a character for the video game I'm working on.
just feels more natural when I rotate him down that way. <sighs> Coming up to the end here, I think I'm going to continue a little bit longer. I just want to continue with what I'm doing. So yeah, I don't think he'll be this jacked, but like, you know, he'll, he won't have this much definition when I'm done with him. Um, putting all of this muscle definition now is really just a, a way to break it later. It's more just for um, having landmarks there, knowing where like the, the main forms of these body parts fall under the skin, that I can start adding like, you know, loose old skin, weight. Remnants of long life of brisket and apple pie. Yeah, so still more detail work to do to that one next subject division level.
Just seen Autodesk discontinue their middleware gameware products. Everything gone but the Stingray. Yeah, I saw some of that. Um, they, I think they wound down some things that really weren't in use anymore. But Stingray, they're still making into an engine apparently. Um, yeah. Engine manufacturing is not easy business. Uh, Amazon's in it now with their uh, lumber yard. Unity has been a leader in it for a while, and they're still getting their asses kicked right now by Unreal Engine. Uh, but Unity is still, I guess, the main, the main choice for mobile games. So that's a huge market, obviously. So I'm interested to see if Autodesk. I mean, you would think Autodesk would have motivation to do you know, kick ass engine work, but you know, I think. If you think about Autodesk products, um, they don't do real time incredibly well. You know, people usually export out to go do game stuff. Things like, you know, not to say that Maya couldn't do it or those things couldn't do it, but they don't really. I mean, they usually people are people aren't showing their put it this way people aren't showing their textures in Maya with Arnold all that often. You know, they're showing their finished they have their like real time characters ready to show off. They show them in some other package. Usually a lot of times it's just the game engine itself. I, mean, I usually use the game engine as just because like that's where I, that's my end game anyway. The place I'm headed is the game engine, so whenever I get everything all finished and ready for the for real time, um, I just show it in the game engine. It's like that's where it's gonna be where your hair shaders are going to be this all set up. It's where everything's going to be. Still, but closer.
runs a little, still a little too quick on the inside of the foot. I don't know why, I just I can make feet that way. <laughs> I always curve them in way too much. more landmarking right now. I'm not exactly sure how thick or thin or how buff I want his calves to be. I just want to put the underlying structures there once again so I can just, like I said before, the upper body is just like establishing landmarks. What game engine do we use for Disc Jam? UE4. Since you're using Unreal, what's the deciding factor for not using Unity? Uh, we had a big evaluation process. Namely, it was like, um, you know, I don't know. I, I don't want to get too into it on Pixel Logic's official channel about, you know, one engine versus another. Um, you know, we basically just evaluated both, and they both had their strengths and weaknesses, of course. Um, you know what we were going to able to kind of do with Unreal was keep our pipeline blazing fast. Um, I was pretty familiar with Unreal Engine 3 as well and I was, I'm was i doing 100% of the art for Disc Jam. Um, so like it's you know a big part of that was just like what am I familiar with because I gotta work as fast as possible. Um, so that was a big part of it. And it's actually come a long way as an engine since we uh, first got into it. It's really grown since their first iteration, like 4.1. See you later, Seagull Crush. The gizmo thingy is uh, R8 new. Um, it used to be the transpose line, which is still super useful. I actually used it a couple times this stream. But the gizmo is just such a great, flexible thing for exactly what I need it for. Um, move the mesh to mesh center, stretch it out down the line, and then fix 
the angle at which you're transforming it. Like that's just a, I mean, testing where I could place an elbow bone just by doing that and seeing that everything reaches accordingly. Very useful. Very useful stuff. The gizmo here, it does, that's the thing though, the gizmo here does more than any other gizmo in any app, you know, like, you use the gizmo even for like deformations and stuff and all these little new deformers and things like, all the things you can do to reorient it on the fly, I mean doing, and doing all of it with just a pen and two buttons is, uh, that's the real achievement because squeezing that much functionality into that few input mechanisms is, uh, the real achievement. like it's a uh, virus of some kind, whatever that is. Yeah, the gizmo as it exists now is just really phenomenal.
keep scaling the hands up and down because I can't quite. that around in case I need it for later. So the real deep down you is the whole universe. How do you want to change the background in ZBrush? If you go to document, you can control the color of the background right there. You can also control how much it falls off, the rate that it, if you want to do a gradient, um, right there. I just go flat grayscale. Um, it's less distracting to me. So we're able to build this guy a pretty good body to start with. A um, little bit more detail work and we'll be pretty much done with his base physical shape there. And then it's just put some clothing on him and he's ready to go for the game. I mean like well he's gotta be we apologize of course. But you know. That's uh you know, two episodes, we got a ball of clay and a Z sphere armature, and we got ourselves a new character. Um, you know, still trying to nail down names for this guy. Um, also trying to figure out what, what he's gonna wear. I'm thinking maybe he'll wear like what a rugby player would wear, like you know, long sleeve collared shirt, kind of muddy, you know, like rugby shirt, like Tommy Boy in Tommy Boy. Um. So uh, yeah, I think I'll stop there. Um, I think next week probably get on to some clothing for this guy, or maybe move on to some environment stuff or a different character. Um, once I start doing like detailing and like really going into the finish work, it's just a lot of repetitive, mundane stuff. It's not as uh, um, not as fun to watch. Not as much. Not ripe as well. Not ripe for instruction either. Um, the more I get into the detail stuff. But anyway, I'm going to call it there. Went over by about a half hour today. So um, enjoy. <laughs> but yeah. 
thanks for coming by, guys. Um, be sure to check out A Cubed Ashley. She streams on Wednesday evenings, and uh, the schedule for the rest of the Pixelogic guys is on ZBrushLive.com. So thanks for coming by, guys. See you next time.